Hello, and welcome to the On the Couch podcast, the podcast that gives you the view from the therapist chair. I'm your host, John Dennis, a licensed professional counselor. You're listening to OTC episode 20 with Clay Cockrell, founder of Walk and Talk Therapy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So another show, uh, episode 20, man. So it's another milestone. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked uh, to, yeah, just be bringing you episode 20. The, the idea that we're that far in uh, at this point just seem, it seems, you know, kind of that mixed bag of it went really fast and really slow at the same time. Uh, And in today's show, I get to share a conversation that I had with Clay Cockrell uh, about uh, two unorthodox methods of uh, therapy. Uh, And so the one being walk and talk therapy. Uh, So the idea of having a counseling session on the go while while you're walking uh, and the other being uh, online counseling. So uh, typically that can cover uh, teletherapy, which is, uh, you know, sort of through video conferencing on HIPAA secure platforms uh, that can to some that can be uh, through email, through text message um, and Both of those, I I just really like the idea of unorthodox methods of treatment uh, because I I feel like, you know, everybody doesn't fit into the same, that same box, you know, that not everybody's looking for the psychoanalytic, the Freudian couch that you lay on. Uh, Not everybody's looking for uh, outpatient therapy where you come to an office and sit and across from your counselor or social worker and talk to them. And the walk and talk therapy uh, lends itself really well to, to certain struggles, certain issues that people may be seeking out counseling for. And obviously, it's, it's a little bit of, you know, the physical uh, exercise and the emotional mental health uh, therapy. So the online counseling uh, is... I, I'm I'm a really big fan of because I have a lot of clients that maybe they're dealing with a medical diagnoses and they're housebound, or maybe they uh, struggle with anxiety and fear and uh, they're unable to leave the house. Sometimes it's it's something just as simple as an injury or a sickness or sometimes the weather, but it it really opens the doors for a lot of people to receive services that. It couldn't otherwise receive them. And that, that's part of why I was so excited to catch up with Clay and, and be able to bring this conversation to you guys. So a little bit about Clay Cockrell. He is an LCSW, a licensed clinical social worker in New York City, and he's the founder of uh, several different counseling-oriented endeavors. So he he has started a couple of things. Uh, most recently, the founder of OnlineCounseling.com. So it's, it's a listing directory uh, with the mission of, of helping clients all over the world, really, to, to find a therapist or a life coach uh, that can, you know, best meet their needs where wherever they're at and whatever they're dealing with. Uh, he started his career as the creator of Walk and Talk Therapy. So if you go to www.walkandtalk.com, uh, that's that's his main website for his his practice. Uh, and instead of meeting in a traditional office, he, he conducts that counseling session while walking through Central Park in New York, which, I mean, that's just amazing in and of itself. I mean, the the backdrop of Central Park as your, you know, office, quote unquote. And six years ago, Clay began his journey into the online world by creating, you know, online marital counseling. Uh, So if you go to www.maritalcounseling.com, you'll find uh, that, that section of his practice there. So originally from Kentucky, he moved to New York City with his wife uh, back in 97. And he's been featured on ABC's Good Morning America, CNN, NPR, uh, as well 
well as you know, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, WebMD, Times of London. I mean, he, he's, he's uh, highly sought out for his walk and talk therapy and online counseling and the online counseling directory that he has. So I, I really hope you guys enjoy uh, hearing about the services that he offers and just the amazing work that he's doing. Well, uh, yeah, I have here with me uh, Clay Cockrell, who is a licensed clinical social worker up in New York, and uh, he's the host of the online counseling podcast. Uh, he does walk and talk therapy, uh, online counseling directory. I mean, Clay, you're uh, you're putting me to shame here, but uh, <laughs> thank you for being being on the show. Welcome. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. And. Yeah, I, I know a bit of your your backstory. So you know, just from doing show research, I mean, you you've been in on the the online counseling from almost the the beginning. I mean, you you've been at it for quite a while. It it feels that way. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and and I know you you shared uh, recently the story of you know your your wife sort of bringing up you know well, why. Why can't you, you know, why can't, why can't you do online? Why can't you do walk and talk? But yeah, how, how did you break into the online counseling to start? And then we'll, we'll get into the walk and talk. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I love to travel. Uh, my wife and I uh, just right now, actually, I mean, I'm, I uh, live and work in New York City, but for the last month, five weeks, I've been in Miami. Oh, wow. um, so I've been working from here, just escaping the New York cold and nastiness. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and so I thought, you know, I, if in private practice, if you're not working, um, you know, seeing clients, you're, you really don't have any vacation times. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you're not getting paid. Um, no. <laughs> and, and I guess from the very beginning, as soon as I learned about uh, Skype, I went, Hmm, that's a, that's interesting. Let's think outside the box. How could I meet with clients and then allow me to take them with me uh, when I travel, and then I, I don't, you know, have weeks at a time where I'm I'm not earning income. Um, so this has been going on for I've lost track five six years, <laughs> and um, you know I've been pretty open when I started it. I was like, yeah, this is simple, no big deal, no problem, <laughs> no regulations. I'm good. Um, I used Skype, which of course is not compliant with HIPAA. Uh, I crossed state lines thinking, <laughs> you know, it's like a driver's license, right? I mean, I'm, I'm licensed in New York. I can work with people in New Mexico. Uh, and then gradually people were like, uh, you we should make it. Yeah, you might want to look into this. I think you're not exactly. And so I, I started the podcast because I was learning along with a lot of other people. And so I thought, you know, let's just all learn together and, and figure it out. So that's where that came from. <laughs> and I, I liked uh, uh, Joe Sanok uh, talks a lot about, you know, proceed until apprehended kind of idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so and, and then, you know, fast forward to today, um, you know, what, what platform are you using now? I go back and forth. Uh, I have an account with Zoom. Uh, they've been really good. Um, I've been doing uh, New Talk, uh, which is uh, spelled N O U S Talk. Okay. Yeah. Um, that that is a nice. I've experimented with VC, um, and and I still have my Doxy. So if somebody's having a problem with their server server somewhere, I, I got backups. I got backups to my backups. Okay. <laughs> Wow, no, and, and I, yeah, I imagine so. Just in terms of um, online therapy, when when we're talking about that, you know, teletherapy, what are what are you talking? What what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, it's it's essentially using technology to connect with a client. Um, you go as far back as you know, seventies and eighties, people were using telephone and having telephone sessions. Mm -hmm. um, now we add video. There are programs out there that uh, you have counseling via text. Uh, there's counseling via email, which is called asynchronous 
counseling. The, the client is to fill up X amount of pages and you devote X amount of time to respond to those pages, which, you know, when I first heard about it, I thought, no, that's not therapy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just no. But the more I learned about it, uh, the more I thought, you know, there's some real good opportunity here to connect with the client via, you know, text, content, emails, uh, time to think through, to pull up uh, different uh, quotes and images and to use uh, different fonts and all caps. And you really can convey yourself quite well through the written word. Now, I don't do that myself, but I know a lot of people who are trained in it and, and it is good. So it's it's using technology in some way to connect with a client. Anything that is counseling outside of face to face, them sitting on the couch, you breathing the same air. Uh -huh. <laughs> and yeah, I think I know for, for our practice, we offer teletherapy. And, and I, I think for each uh, therapist that's going to enter into that, yeah, they kind of have to determine, you know, okay, what am I comfortable with? Do I want to share my screen and show a document? Or, mm -hmm. you know, do I want to do the text or the asynchronous or, or things like that? So, okay. Right, right. And it is, there's a lot of apprehension, I think, uh, especially with Older therapists, maybe, um, maybe that's not the right way to put it, but <laughs> done. very ageist. Of you. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> that experience. This is what they've always done. We get comfortable. We don't mm -hmm. want to mix it up, and there's a lot of fear around it. Um, and and there is some things to learn as far as how to connect with a person emotionally and therapeutically through a screen. Things that I'm still learning. Um, and then there's lighting issues and audio issues and HIPAA compliant platforms and licensing and training and background issues. I, I interviewed <laughs> for my marriage counseling site and she, her screen came up and her, she was in her kitchen and her dirty dishes were behind her. And I went, uh, is this how you meet clients? Yeah. Did you think about that? <laughs> yeah. I always think of that. Uh, I forget the, the gentleman, the poor guy who's going to go down and history with the CNN interview where like his kids were coming yes. in, in the background. <laughs> yes. right. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of things to, to think through, but once you get the answers to those, uh, this is what I use for audio. This is how I set up my background. You, you're kind of good to go. Mm -hmm. It's just then getting comfortably comfortable as a therapist for the actual work of how am I going to you know connect emotionally therapeutically with a client who is, you know, sometimes across the world. Sure. Well, and I, I think um, going off of uh, your online counseling podcast, I think it was episode 58 was, was the most recent one before the, the, you know, sabbatical, the hiatus. Sabbatical, yes. um, and I'm not going to butcher the poor, the poor guy's name, uh, but he talked about, um, you know, if you approach it with a level of confidence, they will, they can pick up on that. They will see that. Absolutely. It'll Absolutely. normalize it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You own it. And, and so that, that comes with time and practice. I mean, I, I train online therapists and I say, you should you know, on a regular basis before you start this, uh, have a conversation with your mom online, teach her how to, uh, to get it all downloaded and hooked up and ready to go. And then, you know, Talk with your friends uh, because we don't use a lot of FaceTime, Skype, that kind of thing. Some people don't. So it, it takes practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and yeah, going off of uh, some of the, the myths, the struggles, what, what do you see? I mean, certainly some of the technology fears, they're, they're mm -hmm. averse to it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just like my own prejudice of, you know, email therapy isn't real therapy. Uh, they'll go, you know, online counseling really isn't real counseling. Um, so once you get past that and go, OK, this is just a tool, then uh, then it's just the, the logistics. But we have to get past our own you know baggage that we bring to the table. This is going to be different because the industry, just like every industry out there, is changing. And we can be obstinate and dig our heels in and say, no, these clients have to show up the way I want them to, meaning they have to drive their car to my office and park in the parking lot and walk into my nice decorated office. They have to do that. Then you know, there's a lot of people that you're not going to be able to meet. And then you may not be as successful as you could be because you're limiting your practice. 
Um, so yeah, it's uncomfortable, but it, it, uh, the, the industry is changing and, and I think that we have to, uh, change along with it. So, uh, that's, that's one of the myths. Uh, the other is it's going to be, uh, really hard to learn all the technology and, you know, 20 minutes of going through a tutorial and you're kind of good to go. Um, there's some things to think through as far as, you know, audio and lighting, but it's all learnable things. I mean, if, if you can learn Freud and Carl Rogers and everybody <laughs> you else, <laughs> you can figure out how to use the camera on your computer. <laughs> yes. I, uh, <laughs> the people will go unnamed, but uh, there was a saying in a previous uh, – Agency that uh, PhD stood for perf- perfectly helpless doctor, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. but but yeah, like you said, it's uh, and especially today's. I mean, it's you know just like Amazon's one click. I mean, they're making it as user friendly as they possibly can. So right, absolutely, yeah. and I think that you know going to therapy is hard enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, making that decision, doing the work, we should make it as as convenient as possible. And I've got you know a lot of people who own their own businesses as clients and, and Wall Street executives, and they just do not have time to even come uptown in, in Manhattan to, to see me. So they shut the door to their office or get a conference room, and, and we have a session then. And it's there's so much more, and we can talk a little bit later about the walk and talk, but I, I find that with the online counseling, I'm getting so much more information from them in their environment first they're more comfortable because they're not sitting in a foreign space uh it's uh, a little bit more relaxed it's uh i'm i'm seeing their background i'm seeing if they're at their office i'm seeing that office persona uh if they're at home i'm getting to see their the background of their home sometimes um so so yeah i'm I'm getting a, a lot of data thrown at me that i would not receive if if they were coming to me uh, it's interesting you know uh that you mentioned that, that idea, you know, we're just, we're trained in observation and, you know, you think of like Paul Ekman and, and micro expressions, but just, yeah, the, like, what's the clothing they're wearing? What's the stuff in the background, the pictures, the decor, the, you know, yeah, a lot of, a lot of things that you can tap into that you may not have had access to. So, wow. Right. Right. Any any other myths or struggles? I mean, obviously, is the you know connectivity, access to the internet, and and that kind of thing. But. Uh, yeah, yeah. The connectivity to the internet, finding the platform that you feel most comfortable with. There's a lot of like iTherapy. I, I love uh, the guys down at iTherapy. They do a great job of. They've got the platform, which is HIPAA compliant. They've got uh, billing software. They've got calendar and scheduling software. It's really like a uh, – and you can pick and choose what you want, but it's like a one-stop shop. And so – or you can hobble together the different uh, platforms that you like for billing and scheduling. And you can do it whatever way you want. Um, but uh, but then you know, learning how to – increase your Wi-Fi, a little tips and tricks. Like I always do earbuds because it helps with any kind of background. Um, I always make sure that my window of my Skype client is pulled as far up to the top of my computer so that I can have that, a sense of, of, of eye contact. Um, and let's see other little things that, uh, that I've learned to the interesting. This is something new that uh so i'm always learning when you look at a screen like you're consuming a movie or television we rarely blink Mm -hmm. and you know i'm in in a therapy session if your therapist (laughs) never blinks that's That's weird (laughs) that's kind of unnerving yeah (laughs) it it really is I, 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 i never thought about that i had a client the other day goes you realize you haven't blinked in four months Okay. I've been keeping track. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. So just to be as natural as possible, but know that there's little things like that that we're always going to have to think through, I guess. And now, in terms of struggles of um, – in terms of d- different diagnoses and um, you know clinical issues that you know do or don't lend themselves to online count teletherapy – um, yeah, um, I, I think that, um, the, it depends on your specialty. Like if your specialty is uh, substance abuse, great. 
it, it's not my specialty, so I don't work online with those clients. There are clients that I feel um, that I don't work with the chronically mentally ill who are perhaps schizophrenic or suicidal or bipolar. That's not my specialty. I would be cautious about working online. But then, you know, somebody asked me, you know, what if I'm working online with somebody and they become suicidal? And I thought, well, what would you do if they were in yeah. your office and so they became just suicidal? End the session. <laughs> yeah, you, no, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to jump on them and take away a knife or something. I mean, you, you call 911. And that's the, 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 the pre-setup. You want to know what are the emergency numbers in their area, an emergency contact. Uh, to, to, you know, how, are, are they on medication? Is this someone that you would normally see in your office and that you feel comfortable with? Um, so yeah, it's, it's setting up those appropriate boundaries clinically that you would in, in an office setting. The other thing that I always do with, with clients is that before the first session, I send them a little tip sheet on how to make the session go well. Uh, make sure that you have earbuds, make sure that you close out all your browsers, so that all of your Wi-Fi is dedicated to whatever platform you're going to use. I give them a little tutorial, just click on this link, or if you're using something like uh, Zoom or VC, here's how to download that before the session so that it's up and running. Um, so I, I give them just a little tip sheet to make it as smooth as possible that first time you, you I'm, come together. I'm making notes as I'm learning, so <laughs> 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 things are things that we need to double check and make sure we're doing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Man. Okay. So. And yeah, I know for for myself, I I've I've enjoyed it up to this point. Of um, like you said, it's you know the industry is changing and we have to adapt with it. Um, and with that, the confidentiality and and informed consent and yeah, going over some of those things of okay, well, you know, I need to know what address you're at before, you know, at the beginning of the session in case something happens if, I don't know, you have a seizure or, yeah, you become suicidal or whatever. Right, um, right. And I, I like the access to, especially uh, with anxiety, if, if they're housebound, uh, if they have medical issues, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially uh, people going through cancer treatments where they're not, they're not able to be around other people because their their immune system is compromised or you know things like that. I, I like that that access. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, a couple of things that I've seen therapists get stopped on is this "what if" mentality <laughs> of uh, huh. what if my guy. Okay, so we haven't covered this, but I think a lot you're, of people you're saying realize therapists that. struggle with anxiety. That's yes. that's unheard of. <laughs> yeah, this one does. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, you know, I, I, I th we haven't covered this, but I think most people know that you need to be licensed in the state where your client is sitting. So yes. I'm licensed in New York. If someone from Louisiana contacts me, I'm I'm really not able to work with them. Now, it's different state by state. And we list a lot of those um, uh, regulations on the online counseling dot com site. But a good rule of thumb is that you need to be licensed where your client is sitting. So, but then this what if mentality of, okay, I'm in Manhattan. <laughs> I just, I just my, thought of a couple of what ifs. <laughs> right, right. It's just naturally. So, okay. One of them is, is that uh, I, I have a client in Buffalo, New York. I'm licensed in the state of New York. We're good to go. What happens if my client goes, goes on, on business to California yeah. or yeah. goes on vacation or they go off to college or, you know, it's like, you know, we're the wild west to a certain degree. It hasn't been, um, uh, all set up. Um, I don't know the answers to all those questions. And th the only thing that I would say is, are you setting up roadblocks to yourself? Mm -hmm. Things that are probably never going to happen if they do, it's really not a big deal. And it's everybody, their own comfort levels and their own level comfort level with risk. But in, in general, so many people I talk to really overthink this stuff. Well, and, and as you know, I think I, I heard you talking recently uh, with going to a conference. I mean, the, the ethical conferences, as you know, I mean, their job is to scare the crap out of all of us. Yes. And yes. they do a good job. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, that idea of, you know, you'll you'll have the pants suit off of you and you'll lose your license and never be able to work in this field ever again and things like that. Um, that being said, I'll, you know, 
offer up the legal disclaimer for you before I ask you these questions. <laughs> okay, good. Because <laughs> um, what came to mind was um, if you have uh, like family therapy in two different locations, like it's it's like group therapy where – one person's in the state you're licensed in and another family member is not. Um, right. Does that then depend on, okay, who is the client? Who Who is the one that the insurance is through them? Yeah, absolutely. I, from, from, from my understanding, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And, <laughs> Le- legal disclaimer. And legal disclaimer. Um, and, and, and in fact, I was uh, contacted just the other day, uh, a couple who he was a truck driver and uh, and she lived in, I think it was Arizona. And so he was all over the place. Mm-hmm. And this was the only way that they were going to have to potentially save their marriage, right? And uh, I said, first of all, I can't work with you because nobody's in New York. <laughs> uh, but uh, here's here's some options. So there's those little, you know, problematic cases that we haven't figured out yet. Um, did, I think it was it Buck Black. Yes, uh, my buddy Buck. You referred him to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I said absolutely. Call Buck. He'll he'll have some kind of answer. Buck is the the trucker therapist who has a niche for uh, truck drivers and. I love him. He's he's amazing. That's all. I gotta. Yeah, I'll have to connect with him. That sounds like an awesome idea. It sounds yeah, like he's helping a a, a very niche, unserved population, which is kind of oh, what yeah. this is all about. So, man. And then one other for the legal disclaimer of like, <laughs> what about the military? What about the military? Where well, they're for- like deployed. Uh, you know, they're overseas. They're oh yeah. Let's let's talk about overseas. Um, for the, the military has a great um, uh, uh, through the VA through their own services, the EAPs. They they've got wonderful services, but a lot of military don't want to use uh, counseling because it may go on their permanent record and impact their careers, uh, which which makes sense. Um, now, when you are within the United States, we have to abide by our state regulations, and. Um, when you cross outside the United States, it seems like the U.S. is one of the few countries in the world that regulate this industry. So that uh, currently in the U.K., and that might be changing, is that anybody could just hang out a shingle and says, I'm a therapist. Um, now, you instead of being licensed by the state, they are a certified and credentialed by a credentialing body. And so the industry, and so nobody would, it's called the British Association of Counseling Professionals, the BACP. So if you're not a member of the BACP or the UK TP, I think is the other one, uh, you are not, uh, nobody would go see you, right? Nobody would trust you. But you could do it. You could, you know, so there's really not any regulation. So somebody from the outside, LCSW from New York, could see somebody in London or Paris. Uh, Germany. There are very few regulations within Africa, uh, none in India, which is a massive country with a huge mental health problem and very few therapists. And they and English is the official language, one of the two official languages. So there are people all over the world that you could be working with. And let's say you're licensed in Rhode Island or even in Texas or California, you have a finite amount of people who are within your target audience, potential clients. When you expand to English speakers all over the world or whatever language you speak all over the world, then you've got a a better chance of building an effective and profitable practice. And to, you know, there are people out there that need your services. Okay. And, and is that kind of where the online counseling directory kind of grew out of? So I was, um, um, seeing people online and in a lot of couples. And then whenever like the husband or the wife said, I would like to find an individual therapist, I'd like to see them online. There really wasn't a place to go and go, well, here's where you go. Look, um, psychology today eventually added, uh, a, a tab where you could search for video therapy. But really what that was is that therapists were willing to do a video call for a consult, not that they do what they call video counseling. Um, so there really isn't a place. So I thought, well, I'll just create one. So we got the domain name onlinecounseling.com, which I'll probably still be paying off forever and ever. And, uh, I worked with some, 
great people to to kind of take the model, the idea of goodtherapy.org and psychology today as a direct a directory service where therapists could pay, pay a small fee and list their uh, specialties and their profile. And then we have this search engine that a therap- a client could come and say, okay, I want to work with a, a female who specializes in depression and speaks Farsi and blah, 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 put all those. And then, you know, these, these names get spit out and then people contact them and hopefully they're, they're able to get served. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, sorry, just, to uh, plug it for a second what what's the actual url online counseling.com and we have both spellings of the word counseling uh, because in the outside the u.s they spell counseling with two l's so huh. either one of them will get you there to us uh online counseling.com i and i i did notice that with the i think it's the podcast also has the the two l's that's mm-hmm. that's so like us americans to <laughs> <laughs> We're going to spell it differently. We're going to do it our way. We're going to do it our way. <laughs> You're listening to OTC Episode 20 with Clay Cockrell, founder of Walk & Talk Therapy. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. Life is hard. But Parenting and Family Solutions is here to help. Our board-certified counselors are easy to talk to and offer a safe, encouraging environment to help you with your unique needs. We specialize in helping clients of all ages deal with depression, anxiety, marriage issues, screen addiction, and ADHD, just to name a few. We now have daytime and evening appointments available in Harrisburg and Lancaster and accept most major insurance plans. Visit our website to learn more at www.parentfamilysolutions.com or give us a call at 717-602-5560. Let us help you build a stronger family and a healthier you. So, yeah, let's let's switch gears to the the walk and talk therapy. Yeah, sure. You uh, you know, same kind of thing. You I know you had told the story about yeah the um, I think it was on Wall Street where he just couldn't get to you in time, just couldn't get away. Absolutely, I had a a small traditional face to face practice. This was. 10, 15 years ago. And uh, this one guy that just kept missing his appointments and he just could not get away from the office, get on the train, go all the way uptown, have a session, get on the train, go all the way back down to Wall Street. And so my wife says, well, why don't you just go to him? (laughs) And um, then my famous story is trying to mansplain, you know, oh, honey, (laughs) you can't do that. (laughs) You who are unlicensed. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Silly, silly woman. Um, and, and so the more I tried to explain, she just kept shooting it down. And, and I'm like, OK, maybe there's something is here. I mean, the first thing was confidentiality. Sure. Well, this is New York. Nobody's paying attention to anybody else. <laughs> I walked by Patrick Stewart the other day and just like, hey, you know, I mean, the, the celebrities, it, it, nobody is really paying any attention. And if you're aware of your surroundings, nobody's going to overhear you. You aren't doing therapy with Patrick Stewart. No, you? I was uh, not. Doing <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a pretty awesome name drop right there. Just <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, just walking down the street. Yep. Um, and, and that happens, I think, in, in New York. But really, I, a lot of times people aren't just paying attention to people. I'm not wearing a hat or a T-shirt that says therapy in progress. Yeah. <laughs> it's just two people walking. Uh-huh. And so um, so anyway, I, I mentioned it to this guy and he's like, yeah, that'd be great. So we met at uh, Battery Park, which is right outside uh, Wall Street, right on the uh, river. Walked for the session. I loved it. Uh, he loved it. Um, he started, um, over the next few weeks, just really making some positive changes in his life and some connections, uh, probably cause he was actually in therapy and not <laughs> canceling therapy, but it's also, I think, cause you're, you know, I think better on my feet. I think a lot of people do, and there's a lot of stuff going on. And like I said, you know, I'm getting a lot more data. I'm watching your gait. I'm watching your posture. I'm watching, you know, how, you know, are you getting distracted? Are you in the lead? Because a lot of people I'm walking with, 
New Yorkers are always trying to make decisions, you know, which train do I take? And, what, and it's just a relief to, oh, I'm just going to follow you. You, you, you make the decisions of when we turn and, and when we go back. And, and that, that gives me a lot of information versus some people who were all, you know, continuing to be in the lead. I walk this way. I want to go around that way. Okay, great. But I'm getting a, a lot more information than, um, than just sitting in an office. The other thing that it does is it creates a wonderful rapport in that I'm matching your speed, your rhythm of walking. Mm -hmm. And so just almost hypnotically naturally creates this connection versus, you know, the therapists who do the mirroring. And yeah, the I was going to say it's a, it's an interesting iteration off of mirroring for, yeah. 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 And uh, I I know previously um, you had mentioned about um, uh, I always say especially for for boys and and men um, in uh, cisgender I believe is the correct term uh, mm -hmm. but that idea of um, a lot of times counseling happens what they say shoulder to shoulder you know it happens mm -hmm. while they're doing stuff together instead of sitting across from one another looking at one another I, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that many people, many men have a difficult time sitting across from someone making eye contact and talking about some very vulnerable, tender, complicated issues. Mm. But by, you know, we're walking, we're looking straight ahead. Of course, we're making eye contact and glancing side to side to make a point. But it really does clear up your field of vision to open up the mind and it's not as intimidating to look somebody in the eyes and, and talk about some of this stuff. So, okay. uh, it does create a more, um, casual and a less threatening environment for, for people to talk and to get real. Yeah. I imagine similar to like myths, struggles, uh, you mentioned about the, the, confidentiality and who's who's paying attention to what we're talking about um the other one that came up was like inclement weather that you know just mm -hmm. sort of hits out of nowhere i mean <laughs> i can't tell you how many times i've been trapped under a bridge in central park <laughs> <just laughs> watching the pouring rain come down uh, yeah i've become kind of an expert in in um reading in the weather, weather <laughs> reading the weather i've got all sorts of apps uh, but I do have an office. Well, I had an office near Central Park. But before I left for Miami, uh, I was uh, given notice that they're going to tear the building down. Oh, okay. so we had to <laughs> vacate on short notice. And oh, when I get back, I'll be looking for a new home. But uh, but yeah, I think it's important to have that option because um, obviously I'm not going to. I don't know. Obviously, I've had couples contact me and say they want to do the walk and talk. And I'm going, no, I'm not going to take three people walking and trying to <laughs> No, Couples counseling is hard enough. I'm not going to be walking through the park with you. Um, <laughs> OK, so yeah, you have to have an office for, for me, you know, uh, the, the, an office for couples counseling. Um, but also for I mean, it's New York. It's nasty weather, whether it's August and it's everything's just broiling or it's February and you're, you're freezing. So um, I always let them you know, call whether they want to be inside or out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, that's a, that's an option. So yeah, most of my clients now are in Central Park. And uh, one thing I, I tell people who are thinking about doing this, other therapists is that you need to, to map out your route mm -hmm. of you know, what is 45 slash 50 minutes. And then at what pace, cause I've got really fast walkers that I'm going, dude, this is not cardio. Just slow yeah. down. You know? <laughs> They're trying to multitask and like, right, right. can I check two, two boxes this at is, the same no, time? No, no, it's not cardio. <laughs> um, the, the, but they get excited and they start walking fast. So I'm mentally, <laughs> and, and it is challenging as a therapist to think about all the things that you've got to do. But one is to, I need to add a loop over here around Bethesda fountain mm. because that's going, or I need to cut it down because they're, they're going really, really slowly. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always being aware of how much time I have. And yeah, it never even occurred to me, like just the other layers of it to have to like think through. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, know where your bathrooms are. Okay. Uh, yeah. That was one of them. Important. <laughs> so uh, shoes. etiquette on walk and talk therapy. Are you allowed to hit the food trucks? Wow. <laughs> are you? I don't myself, but I've got a lot of clients that will go, I'm going to pick up some, you know, those, uh, those nuts or, you know, whatever. I've had a client bring their dog and we're able to, to walk the dog and, and have a session. Um, 
you know, so I'm, I'm pretty flexible that way. Sure. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. The pet therapy, I mean, the support animals and even just, yeah, just, and it, uh, the other one I was going to ask was like feeding the ducks or, you know, things <laughs> like that. It's, that hasn't happened yet. Okay. Um, it's not yet. There are some people that have gotten emotional in a session and so in those moments there's benches all through the park it's just like let's pull off to the side here Mm -hmm. have a moment feel the emotion Mm. and then let's keep going and yeah um more on the lighter side i would say like so are you able to share like what are just some of the craziest things you've seen I mean, New York City, like you see crazy stuff all the time. It just sort of blends into the background. Like. Right. <laughs> uh, I had a manhole cover explode once, um, which wow. means it just shot this really heavy thing. All that it just shot it up into the air, scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Um, that typically happens during the summer, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All that's, the pressure that's, that's, builds that's, up. All the pressure builds up, and it's rare. But when it happens, it's really loud. Uh, so that was very scary. I hope your uh, counseling insurance covers uh, yeah. <laughs> exploding manholes. <laughs> exploding manholes, that's right. Um, and then, let's see, we saw one of those food carts fall off of a big truck. Like, they, they load them all up on this yeah, kind of yeah. trailer thing. And he was parked on a hill, and it rolled backwards and crushed him. Oh, geez. I mean, he was not dead, but he was screaming, help, help, help. And so... I'm in the middle of the session and we kind of look at each other and I'm pulling out my phone to call 911, but then I see like 20 people rushing okay. there and I'm like, okay, he's fine. But then to take that and put it in the, the- uh, therapeutic uh, experience and say, you know, what's it like to see pain like that? And well, yeah, I was, immediately it's for me, I was like, did the session then almost, you know, cause like PTSD of like seeing yeah, something like that? That's absolutely geez. both of us uh, really were shaken. And so to to talk about that, yeah, it was good. Yeah, then on the more serious side of similar to the online counseling, we were saying, you know, are there are there diagnoses, are there treatment modalities that don't really lend itself? Can, can you speak Absolutely. to that? I, you know, and I would say even more so than than online counseling. Sure. There are, uh, for example, I don't work with access to diagnosis. I just – it's not my calling. It's not my specialty. So let me – Pause there just to unpack that for any listeners that aren't aware. So access to sort of the, the, the throwback <laughs> in quote, <laughs> this is great radio where I use quotey fingers that people can't hear. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the personality diagnoses, disorders, the sort of what we call the heavy hitters. The, the heavy hitters. Yeah, the narcissistic. narcissistic. <laughs> borderline, antisocial. Uh, you, you name it, those type of diagnoses that are characterological, uh, I, I don't work with. Okay. I would, I would think that that would be very difficult because so many of them have a hard time with boundaries. Sure. You go into an office, the boundaries are very clear, the roles are very clear, but you take that away, that structure, and now we're just two people walking through the park. That can be very confusing and difficult, I think, for a person who struggles with boundaries. Yeah, especially borderline. I could see where that could blur the, you know, well, we're friends now. I've, I have right. you, I bought you a sandwich or a coffee. Absolutely, or, yeah. absolutely. So those, that's the, the one that comes to mind, I, I think, uh, the, the most that um, – I think it would not lend itself to to the walk and talk therapy. Mm-hmm. And I I had thought of the the EMDR, um, some of the trauma work, mm-hmm. uh, like you had said, some couples counseling. Um, so often, I think anxiety disorders, people that struggle with that, uh, could benefit from it. But I would think a lot of times their anxiety would get in the way of the like. Well, our people looking at me and talking about me or are they listening or, or things like that. I could see where that would cause more anxiety potentially. Um, it's, it's possible. I haven't uh, experienced that myself. I, I think that what happens is that there is a comfort in knowing that there is a, an authority figure. I'm not alone. It normalizes the person could walk through the park and, and not have those emotions. Um, so sorry, I, I was going to say probably more on the, the obsessive compulsive and yeah, things. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and somebody, uh, wondered about, um, uh, ADHD and I, I thought yeah. of, one, of getting right, distracted, right. just too much stimuli. Uh huh. 
And I've worked with so many uh, ADD people that it's it's weirdly the opposite. It's just it, because they are focused uh, in in the session we're talking about, they're not distracted by the squirrel or the the <laughs> car or the marathon or whatever is going on. There, it, it really is almost a training exercise to how do you be focused yeah. in a world full of distractions. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of it that way. That that's a good way to 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 see it as yeah practice and training which is a lot of what you're doing with adhd is yeah you know the executive functioning you know skills and training man okay yeah mm. so how do you determine who is a good fit for online therapy or or walk and talk therapy how, how do you bring that up and, um well mostly pe- because my uh, my site is all about you know walk and talk therapy. So when they come to me, I know that that's what they're looking for. Um, versus if they contact me through the online counseling directory, I know that's what they're looking for that way. So that dif- differentiates. Uh, early in my career, I worked in a psychiatric emergency room. So yeah, midnight <laughs> to eight. Oof. Midnight to eight. Me Man. and two two crusty old nurses. God bless them. They <laughs> took me under their two wing. Two battle axes. <laughs> oh, they were wonderful. Uh, but I, I kind of developed that uh, sixth sense of uh, getting a lot of information and getting a sense of a person. So I do a consult something's call. Something's going, going wonky. Yeah. Something's going sideways. Right. Okay. You have, you have a good spidey sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I do that on that consult call. I, I've advised other people to have a session indoors. Uh, before going outdoors, if you're uh, at all uncomfortable, saying, okay, we're going to do some paperwork and meet and get to know each other, and then the second session we'll go outside. You as the therapist or you as the client or or you recommend either? I, I recommend as the therapist, they say, to, to tell the, the, the client, let's take a an indoor session just to get to know one another, and then we'll graduate to outside. And... Um, now, are you uh, are you still getting uh, a lot of media um, requests in terms of? I know you. I think you were on. Was it Good Morning America? You've yeah. been on in the papers. Yeah. You've yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm still doing a fair amount of, of media. Anytime that you know somebody needs a quirky story to fill some inches on a newspaper or something, they'll go, "Hey, look at this guy." But it's becoming more and more common, so it's not that out there. I mean, there's even a Facebook group now for walk and talk therapists, and they support one another. And and so it's a, when I started, I was the only person doing it, and now more and more people are adding this to their practice. Um, well, and I. Uh, Somewhat jokingly, but I mean, better to be that story than than the other way. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Which incidentally just happened to me because I recently got some media. A reporter got in touch with me. I, I have a niche in my practice where I work with the extremely wealthy. Okay. And so this reporter contacted me and said, hey, this is kind of cool. I want to do uh, uh, an interview about the walk and talk. But she really honed in on my work with the wealthy. Mm -hmm. And so when the article came out, I was painted as the therapist who works with the rich to make them feel better about having all their money. Oh, man. And that's not really what I do. So – uh, I work with you know people and how they are isolated by wealth and how to raise children in a moneyed environment and, sure. and all that kind of stuff. So then it, I've had some other like Bloomberg News and, um, and some other actually do some real in-depth articles about that part of my work. But, you know, sometimes you are – you get bad press. Uh, I, I was actually an answer on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Wow. Um, so that was, that was a, a, a highlight of my career. Yeah. My mother could, you've made you know, it. <laughs> yeah. I've made it to, uh, you know, wait, wait, don't tell me. So uh-huh. that was a fun month and a half. Well, and, and sad that they, you know, that they did that with their story, that that was the spin. i I always remember, a, a youth pastor growing up told us a story of, I, and I can't remember the, the gentleman's name. He was like the wealthiest man in the world at the time. And I believe he actually died of malnutrition yes. because he had shut himself in and was so paranoid. His, his Howard anxiety. Hughes. Okay. Absolutely. Was it? Wow. Howard I didn't Hughes. realize yeah. it was Howard Hughes. Okay. Yeah. Man. Uh, he, 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 you know, money is not the answer to you, a lot of problems. It, it's, it just causes other problems. Yeah, it just and, and then people feel guilty. It's like, why should I feel bad? I got all this money. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's a rich, rich population. 
literally rich populations of sure. interesting issues that I, I love. I love working with my rich people. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, where where can people find you if they are interested in, you know, doing therapy with you, being clients, or if people are interested in finding you, talking to you about setting up a practice? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you can reach me at walk and talk, walk and talk dot com, all spelled out. It's not an N, it's an A N D, walk and talk dot com. And it's clay at walk and talk. And then it's also online counseling dot com. It's clay at online counseling dot com. And we, we didn't talk about this, but I wanted to touch on this if we have a little bit of time. Sure, yeah. Uh, that on the directory, we've recently partnered with BetterHelp. Okay. Which yeah. uh, the two biggest kind of online companies out there are Talkspace and BetterHelp. Uh-huh. And uh, BetterHelp, uh, kind of we partnered with them, created this relationship where they have put their therapists on our site. So it's a, it's a low cost option to um, people who are looking for online counseling. So we have the traditional I have an online therapy. I've got private practice and, and I'm paying a monthly fee in order to be listed here, just like psychology today. And then we've got if if you as a therapist and your listener, if you are um, working with BetterHelp, uh, you're already on our directory oh, no uh, because they okay. put. So that's just a few months old as a trial. And and right now it's it's been really, really helpful to the site. Uh, we were like on page one for and, and in the first ranking on Google for terms like online counselor and online counseling and and so it's it's really helped out pretty well so i'm pretty excited about that's our newest little development that i think is really cool that's awesome and are there are there things you know you wish everybody could could know or understand about either the the walk and talk or the online counseling yeah kind of an overarching theme in my approach is to think outside the box is to not be too precious about our uh, industry. We do important work, but it doesn't have to look like it's always looked. We can innovate. We've, we can do things differently. We, you know, I'm a social worker, so I was always trained, meet the client where they are. And so this is taking that to a literal level of, I am literally meeting them uh, in their living are. rooms, in the park. Um, so, so yeah, I think that, uh, I value the important work that therapists do and that we, we should, um, we should innovate and, and to think outside the box to, to get that much needed service to the people who need it. Well, and, you know, even thinking of like, what is most everybody's, you know, mental image when they think of a therapist or a counselor, they think of the Freudian couch that you lay down on, the psychoanalytic, and that idea of like how many people actually still do that, right? And right, you know where it's where it's come. The same idea, absolutely. So, uh, any any other projects uh, for <laughs> for 2019? I mean, we're you know we're only into March, but I, actually, yes, this is this is my new thing because you know I don't have enough to do. Um, <laughs> I am starting a, a new – the podcast, the online counseling podcast kind of went on a hiatus because we covered so many things. But there has been so many wonderful developments in the last year that I want to revisit that. Uh, there's a new study by Epstein, Becker, and Green who did state-by-state state evaluations of different laws. They now have an app where you can download the app and, on your phone and go, all right, what's the law in Maine? And so I want to talk to them about that. But I'm starting a new podcast on how to find a therapist. Because okay. I can't tell you how many friends and family, they know I'm a therapist and they go, can you, how do I look for one? What are my, and so I want to say, you know, these are the things that you should look for. Obviously you want to go to psychology today. You want to go to online counseling.com. You want to do these other things, but here's what you want to look for in training, in experience. Here's the difference between LCSW and a PhD and a PsyD and a counselor and an LMFT. Here's the different approaches so that people can make an informed decision instead of, just looking on the back of their insurance card and getting a referral from Blue Cross Blue Shield on who's up next in the roster is too important. And so you need to have that ability to look for. So I'm going to be starting a new podcast and, and looking into helping people find 
their therapist. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you have a name yet, or you got a? <laughs> I got nothing but an idea. Okay. So. Hey, that's a start. Yeah. We'll keep you updated. Um, okay. <laughs> and the the app that you mentioned from the study, do you know what it is? It's uh, – you go to Epstein, Becker, and Green um, and put that into Google, lawyer, therapist, put all that into Google, and you'll get to their site. And, okay. and I think you can download the app from their, their site. They're, they're lawyers based in D.C. and New York, and they specialize in mental health professionals. And so they have a wealth of information. Okay. Awesome. Man, well, uh, yeah, talking to you uh, does a number on my imposter syndrome, so uh, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, uh, I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule, uh, the, the time that you have down in, in Florida there. Uh and I'm I'm really excited about getting this out to people and sharing about you know what you do with with the online and the walk and talk space and the and the directory and everything. So it's my pleasure. It's definitely. my pleasure. Well, I'll, I'll definitely keep keep an ear out and check back on the you know the podcast and and everything else you got going on. Maybe we'll we'll catch up down the road for another episode. So, okay. Yeah. Anytime. And there it is. Oh, man. Thank you guys, as always, for joining us for this episode, for tuning into the podcast. Uh, we, we wouldn't be able to do this without the listeners and are just so thankful for all the support and the feedback that we get. Uh, if you have any questions about walk and talk therapy or online counseling, you can shoot us an email at otcpodcast at parent familysolutions.com. Or if you want to reach out to Clay, uh, he'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I, I would highly recommend, uh, if you're interested in it at all, uh, just typing in walk and talk therapy and just your, your local area. Uh, if anybody in the area uh, provides that service, it'll, it should pop up right away. Uh, I know uh, Kevin Boson, uh, B-O-S-I-N, uh, in the Chesapeake, Virginia area, provides walk and talk therapy. Uh, I know of practices out in California. So again, I would just highly recommend that you check that out. Uh, and uh, online counseling as well. Like I said, it, um, a lot of insurance companies are starting to uh, offer that in uh, and cover that with their insurance. So uh, a lot of times you just have to kind of check the fine print or, you know, give, give your insurance company a call just to make sure that they cover it. Um, but it's, it, like I said, it just makes it so much more accessible. And a lot of people, they're, they're much more likely to access services when they're able to do that from the comfort of their own home. And, you know, through their computer, you know, they, they, they're able to sit there in their PJs or, you know, wear whatever they, they want and just throw on, you know, earbuds or headphones and talk to the person through the computer. It's, it, uh, Again, it's just something that, that's making it so much easier for people to get help, which is, is why I love it so much. That puts episode 20 in the books. In OTC episode 21, I'll be speaking with Bill Eddy, founder of the High Conflict Institute and author of the book Splitting. Again, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. We look forward to having you join us for the next one as well. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe and review wherever you're catching this podcast at. You can check out detailed show notes and archived episodes at www.pfsonthecouch.com. If you want to stay up to date on future guests and contribute questions, be sure to follow us on your favorite social media platforms. The author and host of this podcast is not engaged in a therapeutic relationship with the listener and cannot give counseling advice without a confidential appointment. Listeners should be sure to consult with a licensed therapist in their area or seek emergency medical attention if they are experiencing psychological difficulty. A special thanks to the band The Topsy Turvies for the show theme song. Their song, Like a Living Dead, can be found at topsyturvies.bandcamp.com. The bump interview track was the song 1973 by Bruno E. The author and host of this podcast is John Dennis. Special thanks to editor and show producer Trevor Groff.